here's a direct return system. I've got a pump, and you can see I got six zones, two way valves, 600 GPM total. Now there are many different system curve areas here, many different places to shift at part load. Now if everything's wide open, all the two way valves are wide open at 600 GPM, 1% of the time we know where we are. But anything less than that, do you know what your system curve is doing? Do you know really where you are? Let me give you an example. Let's assume that our load is down to on 100 GPM. Okay, just to keep it simple. This is direct return. Do you know which zone needs to 100 GPM? Is it zone one at the top or zone six at the bottom or maybe a little bit of float all of them? We don't know. We, we just don't know. But wait a minute. What happens to the required pump head? This is critical that you understand this. What happens to the required pump head at 100 GPM if it's direct return? Wouldn't it be practical to say to you that if zone six, the one closest to the pump, needs 100 GPM, and all the other two-way valves are closed, that the required head is minimum, low, compared to zone one? Go to zone one, take 100 GPM, and all the other zones are closed. You see it's the furthest one away. It's direct return. It's going to take more pump head to pump the same flow rate of 100 GPM through zone one than it does to pump it through zone six. In other words, when you see a band of 100 GPM, you don't know the head. It could be zone one, which is going to be the highest head requirement, or it could be zone six, which would be the lowest head requirement. Those two-way valves closest to the pump need less head than those two-way valves furthest from the pump. It's called a direct return system, one we've been dealing with for years. Now let's plot that and see what that means. So what we're telling you, system curves have many paths and many areas that we've got to deal with as the two-way valves move back and forth. Let's take this and let's plot it on a curve here for you so you can see. Here's a plot, and and you almost just real. I, I got there's some ASHRAE. This is right out of ASHRAE Figure 13, Handbook 2012, and ASHRAE calls it a control area. It's not my definition. This is ASHRAE's definition. So backing up, I just color coded the slide I just gave you to make the point. If we calculate a system curve, we would think it would be the red line. That red line is true at two points, zero flow, 100% flow. See where they come together? Otherwise, you don't know where you are. <laughs> In other words, the lower blue line would be the two-way valves closest to the pump. The higher blue line would be the two-way valves furthest from the pump. The control head in this case is 20 feet, it's shut off. But here's a, here's a message again. Let's assume I need 3,000 GPM. What pump head do I need? What pump speed do I need? Ah, I'm at 3,000 GPM. What pump head do I need? If the two-way valves closest to the pump are open, then I need, what, about 25 feet. If the two-way valves furthest from the pump are asking for the 3,000 GPM, and I don't know, how much head do I need? I'm just roughly would need what, about 55 feet. So you could be at 3,000 GPM, you can be anywhere between 25 feet and 55 feet head requirements on this pump. You can be anywhere between those two numbers and you gonna have to have the pump speed to get you there, horsepower to get you there. You're beginning to see why you cannot use just one fixed control curve. You need to be able to change the differential. That red line is great. But that red line is going to get you in trouble if the two-way valves further out, and you're going to be short of flow. If that red line is your control point and you're close to the to the pump, you're going to be over-pumping. So you're not going to be as efficient, and you're going to be in trouble if you try to put one constant deferential head in there. That's the message. We're going to build on that in a future seminar, but that's critical. You begin to understand the control area and the fact that if you happen to pump through zone one furthest away, same GPM takes more head than zone six closest to the pump. That's critical you begin to think about that one. We're going to come back to that in a future seminar. Here's the control area we just talked about. So this, this efficiency island thing we talk about a lot, but I think we already kind of defined it, width, difference, and it's just kind of a, more definitions of it and why we want it. And again, I have now taken this control area from ASHRAE with my two-way valves and I plotted it. Guess what we're going to do next? We're going to put it on a pump curve. Here's a control area. Here's a control area from ASHRAE. ASHRAE handbook calls it a control area. I repeat to you, at set flow rate, you don't know what head you need. Uh, again, 300 GPM I would need. What about 25 feet ahead or 55 feet ahead? Depends on where I am. I don't know where I am. 
I do not know. I got to be able to satisfy those conditions. So let's take that and throw it on. Wow, put it on a pump curve. So all I've done right now, I've taken my control area and I popped it onto a pump curve. You see, it's picked at beep is uh, what about 600 GPM slightly to the left of beep. Beep is 85 points. I can also take it and go slightly to the right of beep. All I've done now, I've taken that same control area and put it slightly to the right of beep versus slightly to the left of beep. Slightly to the right of beep, you could argue that my control area is going to cross efficiency lines a little bit higher and my over average efficiency might be better. That's true. I'm not going to disagree with that. But ASHRAE is going to still tell you to pick it to the left of beep unless you do a detailed pump head loss calculation. We are too. So here's the message. Can I pick it to the right of beep and maybe pick up a pump efficiency a touch? Yes, I can. But I'm living dangerously, and you best be sure you got the right pump head. You best be sure you got the right pump head. And that's the, that's the issue. you got to make that decision. We would not argue with you at all that it would, might be slightly higher. If, if you do a good pump head loss calculation, if you don't, you may fall off the pump curve. You don't have much safety. You're losing your safety package.